Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about a very interesting new theory about the creation and the origin of the beautiful planet Mars. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So what we know about Mars today is that it's an empty, somewhat dead planet that very likely used to have very beautiful oceans and may have looked something like this. So here's a terraformed Mars that has uh, much, much better sort of conditions for uh, humans to live on. But uh, then something happened to it and it became barren. It lost a lot of its water, it lost a lot of its atmosphere and uh, turn into a dry world that it is today. It's still not really certain how all of this happened, and we're still not really certain um, about what exactly caused this to happen. Uh, the current best estimation and theory is that very likely it was because of the loss of the magnetosphere. But nevertheless, um, the new uh, paper published in the Journal of Earth and Planetary Sciences Letters uh, actually argues about something a little bit different, or I guess it kind of gives Mars a slightly different story. So let's let's go back to our solar system and I'll tell you a little bit more about this theory and why it actually kind of makes sense. So according to this very interesting paper, Mars actually was created in a very different area from where it is today. Um, having analyzed the materials on Mars, specifically looking at various isotopes such as um, chromium, titanium, and oxygen, the scientist uh, that wrote this paper realized that it's very similar to the composition of the asteroid belt. And so what they actually suggest is that Mars, back in the days, back when the solar system was just sort of born, may have actually been located right here in the middle of the asteroid belt. So much, much farther away from the sun than it is today. And this by itself kind of gives us a lot to speculate about. So if it was that far away from uh, from the sun, specifically at a distance of over three astronomical units, um, it's possible that this is why it had a stable atmosphere and stable um, liquid water. And because the sun was a lot less powerful back then, it's very likely that uh, maybe, just maybe, it just wasn't powerful enough to strip the entire Martian atmosphere um, of various uh, air particles and the, uh, it wasn't powerful enough to strip liquid water either. And uh, this by itself means that maybe Mars didn't have magnetic field, maybe it did not have magnetosphere, maybe it was always sort of uh, magnetosphere-less. And uh, this also implies that because it was so far away from the sun and because the sun was a lot less powerful, it may have had really, really thick atmosphere. Uh, the atmosphere here might have been super thick because it uh, needed to create enough greenhouse effect for it to have liquid water. And let's actually just see what um, may have been occurring here so far away from the sun at this distance. And also I'll tell you a little bit more about why it then um, moved to its current location. So you can kind of see that there's, there's a few particles, there's a few asteroids that I've created that are orbiting around uh, this area as well. And uh, they will actually be the reason why Mars will then move to its new location. But for now though, let's, uh, let's go here and let's... Uh, terraform Mars just to see what it may have looked like before. So we're going to have to create much thicker atmosphere here. And with the atmospheric pressure of five atmospheres, you'll notice that the temperature is actually now increasing to the point where Mars is going to be once again terraformed. It's going to have liquid water and a thick enough atmosphere to sustain that liquid water. So this is uh, going to be that new Mars. This is going to, or I guess not the new Mars, but this is going to be the Mars as it was uh, something like 4.4 billion years ago, about uh, a few million years after the creation of the uh, solar system or the formation of the solar system. And uh, as basically all of the other planets and all of the other objects were kind of uh, being finalized in terms of their shape and their location. Now, what exactly happened to Mars afterwards? Well, as it was orbiting around uh, this particular area in the asteroid belt, you can kind of notice that there's all of these asteroids that I've created that are basically going to be gravitationally interacting with Mars. 
What happens over time, as it basically orbits around the sun, um, because of its much more massive parameters, in other words, because Mars is a lot more massive than these other asteroids, it's going to start kicking them out of the solar system. But as it kicks them out, it's by itself going to start losing a bit of its velocity. So as one of these asteroids is going to be kicked out, Mars will essentially uh, lose just a little bit of its momentum, a little bit of its um, kinetic energy, and will slow down just a tiny bit. But over time, though, this velocity is actually uh, going to start decreasing to the point where it's actually going to assume a completely new position and it's going to move closer to the sun to the location where it is right now. And so all of this happened because of the interaction with these smaller asteroids in the asteroid belt and because of the exchange of kinetic energy. And so as it moves closer and closer to the sun, because it has no magnetosphere and because the sun, sun's radiation is very powerful, it's uh, going to start stripping it of its atmosphere, leaving almost nothing on the surface, uh, basically making it about one hundredth of the atmospheric pressure on Earth right now. And because there's no more atmosphere to protect all of the water, it's then going to strip the water molecules as well, leaving Mars as barren as it is today. And, well, that's essentially the new story of Mars. It's a pretty interesting hypothesis, a pretty interesting paper, and you can definitely read more about it by clicking in on the link in the description below. Oh, I missed a lake here, or an ocean, or a sea. There should be nothing left. There we go. Now it's completely barren. And, well, anyway, so if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and who wants to learn through video games and just likes science in general. Also, consider supporting the channel on Patreon, and come back tomorrow to learn something else interesting that you may have not known before. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about Mars, and hopefully now you know that maybe, just maybe, Mars was actually born and created somewhere else. And before we finish this video, let's explode Mars. I'll see you guys later, space out, and as always, bye bye.